Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Doremi Fantasy Miron no Doki Doki Daibuken, aka Doremi Fantasy Mylon's Quest. This is Prince Watercrest. Fifth star. And. Got some blocks to break at the beginning of this, and we do want to get the ones over here because. Longer range. If you want it. If you need it. Definitely you're going to need it. If you don't have it, so. In case you're wanting it, it's there. And more blocks to break here. In case you need one hit point. Which I apparently did. I think. I don't even know. But. A lot of breakable blocks in this world. that we're going to be saying and taking out just so I can show off all the secrets and as soon as you reach these slopes that's when you see these little orange slices acting as boulders and we got another wine bottle that we can use as a way to get around and if you go through this part and shoot through the wall you can actually make it to the final star just power up again, and it's yours. And now for the little special screen it shows whenever you find all five stars in the world. There we go. Now we don't have to worry about stars for the rest of the level, which thankfully, we don't have that much to, fall, much, much to go in anyway. We have only just this. The... Musician's house and the dungeon and the final boss and that's it. So yeah, that's pretty much all we got right now. Ah, I thought I'd hit that thing in time. Apparently I didn't. And get in here softly and finally can land inside that wine bottle like I wanted and take care of that guy. Ah, there we are. All right. Go down here first because we can actually get some stuff over here, including some clothes. If you need two hit points or one, whichever works. Go up here. Avoid those candy rods, whatever it is they're supposed to be. Jump over that orange slice. Go ahead and get these two nuts because we can. And another orange slice. I'm gonna wait for this guy to move out of the way. Okay, that's as far as he's gonna go, so yeah. Another not keep that waiting any longer. Get rid of him too. And I'm gonna go into this one first because of what you can find in here. More clothes. And for me, invincibility. Which works. The, right, the cork on the right is the best way to go though. Because that's the only way you're going to continue on to the end of the stage. Now when you hit this wine bottle, hold left. You don't want to be taken to the gold because just yet so you can get this. Another shot for your bubble blower if you need it. As if we got all five stars, we can go to the musician's house here and lift the curse on the flute. If you don't have all five stars, he'll just tell you to go back and get the stars. But thankfully, they're really easy to find. And it really shouldn't be that much of a problem anyway. I think I went through that too fast, but whatever. And we got the curse broken on the flute. Now we're going to see what it does. It allows us to push certain blocks. And if you see a block that looks like this, just walk into it and my will push it in the direction that it will allow you to push it. It's pretty good. It'll come in useful 
come in, come in, it'll come in handy in the next stage. So trust me about that. And he wishes us luck. Before we can actually wish go to the, go fight the chap, we gotta get through the dungeon, which it comes before the bows and always has its own unique set of enemies. Just just like in the last world, and will happen to be the same way in every world. This one kind of goes in the loop. Want to break through the candy canes with your bubble blower there. These green missiles, you can jump on them, but you can't take them out with the bubble blower. The only way you'll be able to get rid of them is to just have them run straight into the wall. That's it. And they'll come out of some openings in the walls. That's about it. You also got these gumball machines that shoot out gumball-like projectiles. You got the little cookie dogs that are actually two-dimensional and look like they're almost look like they're not even there when you run into them, or when you turn around at least. And believe it or not, one we can get close. Two we can go through this wall and get the key. Which we'll be needing to get out of here. All too easy to miss. And these little cupcake platforms just melt when you step on them. We might as well go ahead and get some more stuff over around here. Those j gumball machines jump pretty high. Anyway, go here first. Come on. Get some more clothes. If we had kept going down, we would have just looped back to the beginning, but since we're here, let's just go ahead and get through this. Just get the key and get out of here already. And that's the dungeon finished. And here's the boss, which is the chest. Yeah, this 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 is a quirky boss song. It gets better once he's uh, fully drawn, and which will be happening just about any time now. It seems to take forever, but it really doesn't. And okay, want to get out of his way? He doesn't really home in on you. He just goes goes back and forth with that spinning attack. And from there, when he stops spinning, you can keep, just keep hitting him in the head with the bubble blowing attack. And an easy way to just take him out is just to stand on on this little glass of lime jello here and just shoot at him while avoiding all the cakes that he just shoots into the sky that come back down at you. He's, a, he's even easier than the, uh, than the than the other boss that we just when we fought in the, the first video, actually the second. I can't even tell which one I'm doing now. I know I'm doing part three anyway. We save the chef. And he basically thanks us by puking an accordion out of his mouth. And if you don't believe me, he actually pukes out an accordion before he just goes to sleep. Does he not have pockets? Well anyway, this is the second legendary instrument that we need. And we'll be breaking the curse on it in the next world. Stage two done! And next off is the concert hall. I'll go ahead and do the first level because I have the time to do it. But first... We meet Pee Wee. Some mouse with a vest. Anyway, you can climb up to a curtain and go in any direction with it. You can climb in all eight directions if you're on a curtain. The game actually makes good use of its climbing mechanic here. And the doors with the card pips are the, are the doors that you want to go through. That's basically your main hints. And the card pip hint is really useful. It'll help step, help you separate the mini games from the actual doors to take you places. And it's time for the first stage. You can only stand on these 
the statues, you can't go through them. You actually have to stand on them to get past them. And they make a little weird expression when you stand on them. The boss is act the statue is actually a uh, impression of that boss. And these cast and nests, I guess even they're called, are really, really aggressive. They're probably the most aggressive boss, aggressive enemy in this world. And these drums act as trampolines. Just stand on them for a second, and you'll be able to. Get to where you want to go, and you want to explore this level first because, well, the exit is to the right, and now, and this exploring this level will be very much worth it. The music, music, music sheets. Come on, these mu the, the music sheets just fly around. Amazingly, they're probably one of the few enemies that you can jump on and get rid of. Cats and Nets are very aggressive. They will follow you around. And I better judge just out of safety there, because I only got one hit left. There we go. That's that. There's that block that they were telling us about. And there's the pirate mice. Some of them will throw cheese at you. I think the uh, red ones just move back and forth, but you eventually meet the blue ones. And I might as well just go ahead and get this. Because I can. Ah! Uh, I kind of deserve that, actually. Oh, okay, I don't get sent back to the world map when I die. Forgot about that. Well, at least I get, can then get a free life, like, to replace the one I lost. Which isn't that much of a problem. And, oh yeah, when I die, I lose all my stuff. That's great. I forgot about that. I'm guessing I'm going to have the off-screen everything when I finish this level off, which thankfully isn't really that hard. Uh, I forgot I can't float without the fluffy shoes. I don't even know why I went for those. I wonder if I'll have to get the note again. I hope not. Anyway, let's go to the right. Oh, I don't have to get the note again. That's great. I guess this makes it easier to get through here. Now, the exit is directly below us. But, if you go up here, you'll not only find an alternate exit, which still leads to the second second stage of this area, but will also take you to some free stuff. Like these clothes. Yeah, why not use the bowling ball here? It won't work on those uh, balls that are going up and down on these uh, xylophones. Hence why they're making all these weird xylophone-like noises. Just these little dink dink noises. And... I might as well go ahead and do this minigame. Sixteen. I want to make sure I can get to... get to, uh... 80. I think I have a chance. I think I can do it. How can I do it in three birds now? Come on. I don't think I'm gonna make it. Ah, uh, I'm not gonna make I'm not gonna make I'm not gonna make 80. Forget it. I'll still get something though. I thought you needed... Okay, I forgot you needed 70 to get the extra life. Well, since you get the extra life... I can go ahead and just run through this with invincibility. I don't even know why I used the bowling ball, but other than to show it off that it's there. And... We're done. With the first level of Concert Hall. 
Join me next time where we go through a little more of the concert hall. And hopefully by the time I show back up here, I'll have off screen getting all my stuff back. So therefore, we can actually get through this area a little more comfortably because the next one's going to involve some pretty good platform jumping. So until then, this is Prince Watercrest. Take care. Stay safe.